Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel for my review of Season 11's penultimate episode, Once and For All. Akita makes her way to the castle and actually manages to slip in. Meanwhile, the newly formed resistance is making their way to the throne room when Grimfax informs the gang that they need to first destroy Vex's ice shard. Jay is playing video games as the land bounty is heading towards the ice castle and turns Krag into a video game addict. But then, the ice dragon appears and begins to chase the bounty. They attempt to fight back the dragon by using the land bounty's cannon, but this does not work and the dragon severely damages it. So in the end, Nia is forced to use her mad roadkill skills to run over the ice dragon, which works and so the dragon is temporarily defeated. Meanwhile, the Resistance runs into Vex with his entire army of Ice Samurai, and since Lloyd is the very special green ninja, he gets to go to the throne room while Kataro and Grimfax deal with the Ice Samurai. However, they are easily defeated. Akita arrives at the Ice Emperor's throne room and begins to walk up the stairs, ready to stab the Ice Emperor, I guess, but her tiptoeing isn't quiet enough and she awakens the Emperor, who pushes her back down to the bottom of the stairs and is about to freeze her when Lloyd comes in with his powers and he declares that they will finish this fight once and for all. Let's start with the good stuff first. First of all, I really liked Akita's involvement in this episode. I was definitely very concerned that she would be a subplot. And yeah, I mean, she kind of is a subplot, but I think the way that they handled her was all in all pretty well done. And this episode did a great job with her. I particularly enjoyed the scene where she's climbing up the Ice Emperor's throne and she's ready to get her revenge and I really like the Ice Emperor's interactions with Akita and how the Ice Emperor basically is oblivious to everything that happened and has no idea who Akita really is. There were some nice fights in this episode and what I liked is that they didn't really drag on. I like that these fights were presented in short bursts and didn't seem to go on forever and you have a few fights with the Ice Samurai in the castle and also with Vex and his entire army and I feel like these fights were generally well done. The same can be said about the Ice Dragon fight, I feel like this was generally a pretty entertaining fight to watch, and unlike a lot of the other big monster fights in this season, this definitely had a lot of relevance to the plot, I mean it is the Ice Dragon, it is the Ice Emperor's Dragon here that we're talking about, so I feel like it wasn't exactly filler in the sense that other fights have been. And the fight had a pretty interesting ending, with the Ice Emperor's Dragon becoming Roadkill. Well, he's actually not dead as we'll find out in the next episode, but I thought that ending was rather creative. And also the stuff with Krag briefly becoming a video game addict, and fighting over with Jay who gets to play on the arcade, was actually pretty funny, although I do feel that they took it a bit too far, when Cole was basically threatening to revoke Krag's video game privileges. I thought that took it a bit far, but other than that, it was pretty funny. The ending scene with Lloyd bursting into the throne room and declaring that it's time to end the fight was also excellent. Is it just me, or was anyone else a bit disappointed with how they handled Grimfax and Kataru? I mean, I expected a bit more from them, but really they just serve as bait for Vex and the other samurai. And then, like Season 2, there's this whole thing of Lloyd getting to the finish line by himself, while the others have to hold off the other minor threats. Grimfax and Kataru, and especially Grimfax, I mean for Kataru, at least we got a lot of development for him through the flashback episode. But consider this, Grimfax is supposedly the former king of the Never Realm. I mean, they could have explored more about how Grimfax fought through the corruption and turned to the resistance. And I don't think just learning that Zane was a good guy could have done that. But instead, they choose to cast him to the side just to focus on Lloyd again. And I understand that Grimfax is a side character, but surely he could be explored more. Instead, they choose to do episodes like 19 and 26, which are 100% useless and clearly those are more important than actual character development. So overall, the plot was pretty good and structured nicely. I like that we got to see some more of Akita and Krag and the other ninja, but at the same time, I wish we had seen more of Kataru and Grimfax. And ultimately, I feel like the problem with this is simply because they chose to do so many filler episodes and they didn't budget their time correctly to do this, and so we end up not getting enough of them. As for the good characters in this episode, Akita and the Ice Emperor were pretty good, and especially Akita, I feel like this is the best that she has been in the season so far. I really loved her interactions with the Ice Emperor, and particularly how the latter was totally unaware of Akita's suffering and who she even was. Anyways, as for action, pretty good in this episode, I like that the fights weren't super long, and so we got a bunch of smaller fights, I thought the Ice Dragon chase was pretty good, as well as Akita's brief interaction with the Ice Emperor. And as for motion, I do again feel that they did revenge right for Akita, and I liked her interactions with the Ice Emperor and how she explained why she wanted revenge. My final rating for this episode is going to be a 9.5 out of 10. This was definitely continuing the hype that episode 28 of Fragile Hope had set up, and I really thought that they did action pretty well with this episode. This episode also had a good role for Akita, and also showed me that she's not 100% a subplot, and I really liked what they did in this episode. All in all, pretty good, and we'll be reviewing the finale next. Thanks for watching, if you guys enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, share with anyone ever you know, and let me know your thoughts on episode 29 once and for all, and I will see you next time.